Okay, so here we are. We're going to pull apart a Nova OC Roma 25, and I'm going to plug um, the vacuum return port on this engine. So for those who are unfamiliar with taking apart an engine, that's how we do it. Just four screws along the top. Make sure to use a good straight blade that uh, fits in the Nova OC heads. Well, and, uh, just loosen off the screws. Simple as that. Use my, I'll cheat a little bit and use my electric screwdriver and save some time here. Simple, pull the head off just like that. Take the covers on off of this thing. Pull the carburetor off. Give that a little push just to uh, release the little cam lock. Carb comes off. Okay, now the back plate, same thing. Just four little screws. I like to break the initial torque with a screwdriver use my electric to save time. Simple as that. Back plate. And head button. Like that. Head button's off now for the sleeve. You can do one of two things. You can do the tie wrap through the exhaust through the top of the engine like this and then you turn the engine over using a clutch nut on the front here and it'll pop the sleeve up. I guess I can do that just to show if I could find the correct wrench for doing it which I don't seem to see in front of me. Give me one second. Okay, so clutch nut on the on the front wrench here. Tie wrap through the exhaust port and just give it a turn. See how it lifts the sleeve up, no problem. Back the piston back down, pull the tie wrap up. Now, then I just carefully take a, the tuning screwdriver and just lift that up. It actually doesn't take much at all. And then, boop, there's the sleeve out. And a little trick I learned for taking the rods off. That one just came out on its own, very easy. Pistons out. Okay, I like to keep the pistons and sleeve sets together, keep everything nice and organized. And uh, now I'm gonna pull out the, pull the crank, that uh, clutch nut off. So I just take my tuning screwdriver just to lock the crank there. And then just uh, back that down. There we go. So the crank the cone off. And the uh, crank is now out. Okay, let's just lift this camera up a little bit here. Oh, that's so good. Okay. Now I'm gonna pull the bearings out of this engine. I'm gonna use the Huddy bearing tool. So it's a very, very, very nice unit. As you can better get here. Okay, so the camera mount. Okay, so this is the Huddy bearing tool. It's just 
pretty basic. There's a little extender here that we put on. We take it, we insert it through the engine like this. There's a bearing retainer cup. I set that on the face of the engine so it looks like that. And I take the other threaded part, thread it down. Now, just like opening a bottle of wine, you just and uh, boom, front bearing is now out. It's now pushed very nicely into the front cup, bearing off, retract the bearing tool. Okay, now it's time for the rear bearing. So, there's the other tool that comes with the Huddy bearing tool engine maintenance kit or whatever they want to call it. Okay, so it's simple as this. Insert into the back of the engine. Make sure the tensioning disc is backed off. Now turn the little knob here until it tightens up. There we go. It's locked up inside the bearing now. Back this off and then once again, just like opening a bottle of wine, unscrew it and Simple as that, bearings are out. Okay. Now, if you're having a problem with these engines, it appears that they want to draw a vacuum through the front of the engine. What I think I've tracked it down to is, uh, let's see if I can get you a view of it. If you look in the front of the engine here, there is a vacuum return port right there. And what I think that's happening is, is it's putting too much vacuum pressure to the behind the front bearing and causing these engines to operate with a small vacuum leak and sometimes a large vacuum leak depending on what fuel you're running. Very simple fix that I found uh, is to actually block that. That hole and with 1211 or really any kind of RTV silicone would probably work. Um, I use a product called 3 Bond 1211. You just buy it at a motorcycle shop. It's also sold as a product called Gamma Bond 1211. And this is fully nitromethane proof. Really good product. It's a little more money than a typical um, RTV type sealant, but it's a good product. Uh, it's not necessarily needed. But uh, it definitely is a good product. Okay, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to walk away from the camera for a split second. I'm going to just give this a little spritz with brake cleaner, a little shot of air, and I'm going to show you how I plug this. Just give me one second here, please. Okay. So, here we go, back with the brake cleaner. I'm going to give that a little, a little blast out. Hopefully it doesn't melt these gloves. I'm just trying them out for the first time today. They don't... Can't get a shot of air. Okay, there we go. Shot of air. Now we'll uh, open up this. I'll show you all that I'm doing. It's actually really simple. All right, okay, so I take some little dab of 1211 on the tip of my X-Acto knife, just like that. You don't, you don't need very much, just a little smidgen, just like that. Come in. From underneath the carburetor, you can see the hole loud and clear. Just pile that silicone across that hole, just like I'd say just like you were filling a nail hole in the wall with some some spackling compound or something like that. You just push it into that little hole and kind of scrape it clean on the surface. Just work it in there. Make sure you get a good, good little bead in there. And, and if you look, let's see if I can get this, get you a view of that. You can see now you can see that silicone popping its way through there. So 
and then if you look, let's see if I can get you a good view of that, and see where I've sort of plugged it into the corner there. A little, it's a little sloppy, but I'll clean that up with my Exacto right now. The main goal is just to make sure we push enough in there to, you know, plug that return port. And, you know, my theory on this port is it's only there to return excess fuel and oil that would accumulate in the oil, oil ring here um, to prevent it from wanting to leak out the front bearing. So they put that vacuum return just to return the excess fuel and oil. But what we're finding is, is like that hole is drilled a little too large and these engines are wanting to suck their vacuum seal ring here that's supposed to fill with oil. It's actually sucking it dry and causing the engine to have a, a vacuum leak from the front of the engine, which you can test by when you have the engine running you can spray a little bit of nitro spray behind the front bearing and the engine will stall almost instantly if it's breathing through there and the problem is I'll attach some pictures to this video but if you're running around on a really dirty track and your engine happens to be venting through the front bearing your front bearing is going to fill with dirt and that dirt is going to turn into a fine abrasive paste and it's going to travel through your engine and wear your engine out, cause it to flame out, cause all kinds of tuning issues, and, you know, just generally be a real pain in the ass. So, plugging this little vacuum port seems to uh, somewhat solve the issue because after I've plugged the port like this on several engines, they no longer stall when I spray brake cleaner or nitro spray behind the front bearing. You could even test with WD-40. I mean, you don't, you're not dousing the engine you're just checking to see if it's breathing through the front okay it looks like uh, looks to me like I got that plugged pretty decently and I think that I would call that good now if you here were curious how the uh, bearing tool how quickly it works so I'm going to show how good it can put your bearings back in your engine so here we go once again I take this bearing tool um, when you're removing the bearings you use this little extender piece, but when you're putting them back in, you do not use the extender piece. So I'll leave that out. So I take your bearing tool like this, put the first bearing on, so it just sits like that. Balls face your hand, because that's to the back of the engine. You take your engine, you slide that on like this, put that rear bearing right up into where it's supposed to go. Okay, so we're right here. Then you take the front bearing, like this and now since this uses a 17011 bearing because this is a Benito that I'm going to put back together I use a little spacer washer here so it um, it doesn't interfere with the inner race because the inner race on these engines is set somewhat uh, proud of the outer race and if you try to install it without using that washer you'll crunch the inner race and you'll make the bearing you'll damage the bearing so Always use the spacer shim if you're doing a Nova 17011. And it's simple as that, that retain that bearing cup, you just reverse it so now it becomes the press. And you just tighten her up like this, just like, well, I guess reverse of pulling a cork out of a wine bottle. And uh, you just tighten them up and the rear and front bearing are installed. Simple as that, just boom, 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 you're done. About a minute not even and you can have the bearings in and out of an engine with this amazing tool and here we go Nova Rossi Benito with the vacuum port plugged which I did about an hour ago so the silicone's dry though I would give it 24 hours before I ran the engine bearing feels great bearing feels great we're done just like that there's pulling apart and putting back to pulling the bearings out and putting them back in and plugging the vacuum port thank you for watching hope this helps bye bye